Hello friends, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 350, which is a significant number of podcasts, and I'm going to touch on that in a little bit. But I am Lisa, your host, also known as Fiber Nymph, and today is Friday the 13th of November. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Somehow a Friday the 13th in 2020 seems like it should really come with its own ominous soundtrack, but you know what? You can only have negativity when you assign it, I think, sometimes. I mean, not to say that there haven't been negative things this year, because plenty of negative things and bad things have happened, but I think it's possible to let that kind of mindset overtake us and have more control than it really deserves. So I am trying to maintain a positive outlook at this point on what's left of this year, and also just trying to remember what has been good this year because there have been good things that have happened this year my daughter moved home um she got a good job um she even pointed that out to me the other day she was like everybody's talking about what a you know shit show this year has been she said but honestly you know i had a, like a good year like good things have happened and i said celebrate them you know we need to focus on those kind of things so anyway um yeah and it's November and I always, oh, I mean, you should be thankful all the time, but like I always try to focus on things that I'm thankful for, especially in November with Thanksgiving coming up. So yeah, I'm just, I'm thankful that you're here and I'm thankful that I've had 350 episodes of 90% knitting. That's so exciting. That's not counting like special episodes, like unnumbered episodes that I've done. So it's really more than that, but here we are, 350 episodes in, and also kind of another positive happy thing for me on Sunday, which will be the 15th of November, that will be my one year hair anniversary of not coloring my hair. That was the last time I had a hair appointment that I got my hair colored and I decided right after that appointment, literally right after that appointment, I was not gonna color my hair anymore. I liked it, but I was so tired of the time it took to do it and the expense and I didn't really care for the salon I was going to and I didn't wanna have to <laughs> search out another salon up here. That was a long traumatic experience for me having to leave where I went before I moved up here. Anyway, I had made the decision I wasn't going to color my hair anymore. And then, as it turned out, we had a pandemic that, you know, was keeping people from going to get their hair done. And even prior to that, I started having um, some health-related issues that was causing me to lose my hair. Yeah, I'm not going to go into details on that, but um, suffice it to say, I wasn't going to do anything that was going to jeopardize my hair until I got that under control. And that's also the reason I quit straightening it because I thought, you know what, I just, I don't need to stress my hair and my scalp out any more than it's clearly already um, being stressed out by my body deciding to be a jerk. <laughs> anyway, things are under control now. The hair that I lost in the patches I lost, them will never grow back. Yay! <laughs> no. Um, as my dermatologist frequently points out to me, well, at least you have naturally curly hair and that does help to camouflage it. I'm like, Yay! Oh, I pointed that out to him one time that he says that almost every time I see him because I had a dream about it, about him saying that. And he, he hasn't actually mentioned it since then, but I tend to bring it up. It's, it's sort of a joke between us now. Anyway, if I remember and if I can, I will put a picture up here of what my hair looked like a year ago. Look how different. I don't miss it. I mean, I enjoyed getting my hair colored, especially when I did the fun, funky colors, but like, I really like my gray and I really am enjoying having my hair curly. Although I did straighten it for the first time since last year. Well, since probably January. I straightened it, oh, I don't know, a week or so ago. My daughter had her flat iron out and I just, I decided to play and I straightened my hair. And I did post a picture to Instagram um, I will try to remember. Maybe I can put that in here, too, if I remember. <laughs> um, it looks so different. And it's so long. Oh, my gosh. Whenever it's straight, it's so long. But it's very thin compared to my... I, mean, I used to have such thick hair. And, I mean, I think you lose hair as you get older anyway. But I've definitely got much thinner hair than I ever had. But whatever. I have hair. I like it. I'm happy. It's fine. And... Let's move on and actually talk about 
stuff. Tea. You want to talk about tea for a real second before we jump into other yarn related things? I'm drinking some more Plum Deluxe tea. I brought the package in today because I just got a shipment yesterday. Um, this is Maple Pecan Black Tea. That's their label. Uh, and it is black tea, oolong tea, pecan pieces, apple pieces, cinnamon chip, cardamom, clove, safflower, maple syrup extract, love and gratitude. <laughs> Um, all of their teas have love and gratitude in them, except I noticed a couple of their holiday teas that I got, they have joy and gratitude. And I just think that's the best thing ever because we can all use more of those things. This tastes really good. I wasn't, I was expecting it to be a little sweet and it's not. It definitely smells like maple and there's a maple flavor to it, but it's not a sweet maple flavor. So I did add about a teaspoon, well, a half a teaspoon, I would say of honey. I could have put maple syrup in it though. That would have been good next time. That's what I'll do. Anyway, it's already half cold because I've been sitting here trying to get this podcast started for at least a half hour. So here we go. And hopefully the sun will cooperate today. My husband is at work, obviously. Um, he actually had to go in three days this week to use the office because he had to do some like high volume printing. So I'm out here in his spot. I didn't know he was going in today. I, I thought he was done, but he said he had to go back in. I didn't even bother to clean up. So like all this stuff, that's his work stuff. That towel, that's for when the cat, well, Babette usually likes to come out here when she can sneak out. So we have a towel on the couch for her to sleep on. Everything in here is just my husband's work stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea how we're going to do Christmas this year because the tree usually goes in that corner right there. I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to do that. But anyway, let's move along. 350 episodes. I think 350 episodes is something to celebrate. So we're going to do a drawing and what the drawing is going to be for is this skein of Deep Fall. This is on Cozy, which is a worsted weight. And in addition to the skein of Deep Fall, I'm going to include this really fluffy pom-pom um, that will coordinate really, really well with the skein because it's kind of the same color as that Merlot stripe in there, which is sort of blowing out here in the light. But anyway, so if you win this, you will win the skein and the fluffy pom-pom. And I'll probably throw in a few other little extras for you. Um, I don't know what they'll be yet, but stay tuned and find out. <laughs> anyway, to enter, I'm going to do this drawing here on YouTube in the YouTube comments. So if you would like to enter to win the skein of yarn and the pom-pom and the as of yet unnamed little extras that I'll send your way, um, please leave a comment here on YouTube in the comments. God, how many times can I say the word comments? Anyway, leave a comment and tell me what you are thankful for today. It can be something little, it can be something big, it doesn't matter. Just tell me what you're thankful for. And the next time I record, I will use a comment picker and we will pick a winner. If you comment that you're not interested in, um, in winning the prize, you can say that. Although I guess if you don't answer the prompt, I would know that. Um, but yeah, just tell me what you're thankful for and that'll enter you into the drawing. So anyway, I just thought that would be something fun. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the knitting. I'm wearing my first finished object. Um, this is my cowl that I was weaving the last time I recorded. Um, so I'm calling it my autumnal houndstooth cowl. Um, I wove this on my Ashford 10 inch sample at loom. You know, I feel like a news anchor or something because I'm sitting at this table and you're all the way over there and I can put my arms here and I've got my papers. It's weird. <laughs> Usually my husband's computer is still here whenever I'm at this table. I never have all this space. Anyway, okay, so um, I wove this using um, Malabrigo Rios in the Sunset and the Glitter colorways. Sunset was the orangey color and glitter is the browner color. Um, it's sort of a tonal brown. It's really pretty. Here, let me see if I can get closer. Because <laughs> that wasn't awkward. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it's nice and long. I don't actually know how long it ended up. I didn't measure it, but it's definitely long enough to double around my neck. And it's actually a little looser than some of them that I've made that way. And obviously I've got the fringe because I love missing fringe. 
I wasn't actually planning to wear it through the podcast, but it's a little chilly out here, so I might just leave it on for right now. Um, I don't think I have anything else to tell you about it other than the fact that I have finished it. I think I finished it in like a day. It, it does not take long to weave these, um, maybe a couple of days. I don't know, but it's done. And both of these yarns were on my 20 and 20 list for this year, specifically to make one of these cowls. So I'm happy to have gotten those done. Okay, my next finished object is this. I know, aren't you excited? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Lisa, that's kind of a short scarf. It's not a scarf. Um, this, <laughs> this was some hand spun. I was just in the mood to use some hand spun. You know, do you ever get that way if you're a spinner and you have like a huge stash of your hand spun? Do you ever feel like you just want to touch it? And that's really what I wanted to do. I was in the mood to hand wind a ball of hand spun. It's a thing for me anyway. And so I pulled this one out because I knew it was a heavier weight and there wasn't a lot of yardage to it. I think there was maybe, I don't know, maybe 60, 60, 70 yards of this. Um, and this was a bat that I purchased many years ago. I'm going to say maybe 2012. And it was probably one of the first bats I ever spun. It was a very um, chunky kind of bat. It had a lot of fluffy things in it, as you can see. I bought this from Heidi and Lana. I don't think she does bats anymore, actually. Um, she does a lot of designing now. And I guess she still does yarn. I don't know. Anyway, I got this out at a Knitter's Fantasy in Ohio the very first time I ever vended there. And I spun it up, you know... Probably not immediately, but a couple, maybe a year or so afterwards. So it's been in my stash for quite a while, and I pulled it off, and I thought, I'm going to wind this up and do something with it. So I wound it into a ball, and then I had no idea what to do with it, and I thought, well, maybe I could crochet it into, like, a round mat, and we could put a plant on it or something. So I attempted to do that a couple of different times, and that turned out horribly. I... Again, I'm a new crocheter and I just could not get that circular thing going right. It looked really weird. So I ripped it out a couple of times and then I tried to do a rectangular one and this took a couple of tries too. <laughs> and then I finally, I, I went up a crochet hook size. I think I ended up using a K on this. and. I, it turned out fine. Now it was not, it was much more of a, what's that shape? Not a parallelogram, but what's the one that goes like this? I can never remember. Like the two sides are like this and then the other sides are parallel. Whatever that shape was, <laughs> that's what it was. You can kind of still see it. The top is a little shorter than the bottom. I blocked this super, super aggressively though to get it into a rectangle. And I am using it to have a few of my plants sitting on. If I have, if I'm able to, I will try to put a picture of that in here for you. I keep doing this today. I really hope I'm able to do the technological wizardry to get the picture here. And if I don't, it'll just be here. <laughs> but I'm trying for here. Anyway, it's cute. It's a little bit functional um, and it used up some hand spun that I've had in my stash forever. So those are my two FOs for this week, um, but I have made a good bit of progress on some knitting projects. So let's talk about those. I actually have one of my Shepherd's Pie short-ish socks finished. I forgot to bring a sock blocker in, so we're going to go blockerless for this. And we've got cat hair, of course. But here's the first one. It is finished. I didn't use any contrast for anything. I just knit through what I had of the yarn. Now I already used the beginning of the skein for a sample. Um, so that's why this is not the actual start of the colorway. But it is one of my pie colorways. It was my pie colorway for last year. Uh, or no, for this year. Well, this past pie day. <laughs> 2020 uh, is shepherd's pie and then I'm well into the second sock I'm on the heel decreases now so it's coming along again it's mostly just being worked on when I'm sitting out there at the dining room table so whatever 
not in a big hurry. I'm really hoping, I mean, I waited after I did my first sock and I weighed the rest of the yarn and I should have just enough to finish the second sock. So hopefully I didn't like do anything too differently <laughs> so far in the second sock. And it's still in my little pouch by JD Studios 480, which is just so adorable. Okay, so that is one thing, and that is a sport weight yarn. That's my traveler base, um, so I'm knitting that on US 1.5s as opposed to US 1s, which is what I usually use for my fingering weight socks. Okay, next up is my sweater. I did cast on my weekender-ish revisited sweater. And it's living in this Bags by Awesome Granny bag. Um, I have so many of her bags. And I'm unapologetic because I love her bags so much. But I, I just really like this fabric. <laughs> this cottage fabric. Um, okay. So, I've got a lot to tell you about this sweater. <laughs> let's go back. In case you're new, let's go back. And um, I cast this on originally. I want to say maybe in April. It was earlier this year because I did a combo spin, you may remember. Um, when did I do the combo spin? I know I have it in the show in my yarn notes on Ravelry. I think I finished my combo spin for this yarn in May, like late April, early May of 2019. And then I had spun the yarn specifically to do the Weekender Pullover by Andrea Mallory. Then I started it finally, I think earlier this year. And I had swatched and everything, um, but I started it in a size, two sizes bigger than I really should have for the amount of ease I wanted. The pattern was written to have like 10 inches of positive ease. And I didn't realize that that was built in to the size, like I chose the bust size that was closest to my bust size, so 48 is what I picked, and that I didn't pay attention to the schematic that showed that the finished 48 would yield like a 46 or a 56 or 58 inch bust. It was going to be huge, and I don't like that much positive ease. So after waffling about about that for a while and just sort of ignoring the sweater, because I had a fair bit knit and I'd even done the tubular cast on <laughs> um, for the split hem. I ended up ripping it out and I just re-soaked the yarn and hung it and everything and okay fine and then I just let it sit for a while and I thought about it and see the other problem that I was having mentally with the sweater was not only the size that I made too big but the way the yarn was striping because it's it's here let me pull out Oh, I don't have an extra one in here. Okay, well, here's one of my skeins. So, you know, my combo spin goes through a lot of different colors. They were all in similar families, but it's got a lot of color. It's not a combo spin. Sometimes people do them with a lot of the very same colors. Mine was quite different. So I was getting stripish areas. And on the first on the first version of this, my stripe areas were fairly wide. And I was afraid that once I got up here, because I was working it in the round, once I got up to the armpits and had to split for the top, the, the front and the back sections, the striping would look, okay, I said that backwards. It was striping fairly narrowly, narrowly. I was afraid that the stripes were gonna become noticeably quite wider up at the top and at the top of the back and the front, okay? And I didn't want that. And so that was bothering me. And then I was having concerns about the sleeves, but then somebody pointed out, well, it's a drop sleeve and blah, blah, blah. So, okay, but still it was the size of the striping that I was more concerned about. So I had ripped it out and I was gonna start it over, but I was trying to think of how I could do it differently to mitigate my issue with the stripe size. So I finally landed on the idea that I would knit it flat um, a front and a back and then seam it and that way I could better control the stripe widths because um, they would not differ very much from the bottom to the top because the other thing I'm going to do on this version is I'm going to do a little bit of decreasing before I get to the like when I would 
get to the point where my sleeves would start or the the armholes not the sleeves um, where the armholes would start I am going to decrease down to the next lower size from where I'm at now since there is positive ease built in <laughs> it makes sense in my head anyway so that's what I did I started I did not do the tubular bind on this time I just did a regular bind off or cast on I'm sorry I did not do the tubular one again life's too short it looked nice but yeah life's too short so here is what I'm calling the front at this point they could be interchangeable it doesn't matter but this is what I have so far and the little marker there that just marks I think it was 13 inches there so I'm about at 16 inches at this point so I think width wise it's much better I mean it's still going to have some positive ease to it but it's not I'm not going to be swimming in it and this is what the stripes are playing out like and I thought okay I kind of like that <laughs> so then I decided I'm going to go to about 18 inches before I hit the armhole point so I still have a little bit to go on this but I wanted to start the other half and get them both to the same point so then I could better decide what I wanted to do so I pulled out another skein of yarn which I've got it all balled up I pulled out another ball that I thought looked sort of comparable <laughs> I don't know what I thought was comparable in this particular context but this is what the second one looks like <laughs> do you see that huge swath of dark color down there oh my gosh and then all of the striping in this one is so narrow compared to that first half. Like, what is even happening with this? Here, allow me to hold them up side by side as best I can. Look how different. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm working away at this. And the second one is up to about, I think, 14 inches. So the, whether it's the front or the back or whatever. I finally had to have a come to Jesus moment with myself over this project and realize that it wasn't so much the pattern design that I was fighting. I mean, yes, I had it too big the first time, but it wasn't so much the pattern that was going to be an issue with how my yarn worked. It's the fact that this is the first combo spin I've ever knit with. It was the first combo spin I've ever spun. And I just didn't fully grasp the nature of combo spun yarn. I think that's more it. Now, maybe if I had done a yarn that had like all blues or all a single color, you know, just different shades, maybe it wouldn't be as noticeable and it wouldn't be like as stressful. But with this many colors in it, like the differences are very different. Like the stripe widths are very, very different to me. And well, to you too, probably. I mean, obviously that first half has some really wide stripes. I mean, look at this gold. Well, it's not, not all gold, but it's predominantly gold up there. I mean, and here, I mean, yeah, the bottom is pretty, I mean, it's dark, but it's, it's not even all the same color. There's different colors in there. Although I gotta tell you, I'm really digging that turquoise that's at the bottom. I think that's so pretty. Anyway, these are just so narrow. So I basically have just decided that I am going to embrace the complete oddity of this combo spun yarn. I'm gonna let it be what it's gonna be. And I'm just gonna release control of it because I can't control it. I would have to like chop the yarn into a lot of pieces to really get any kind of order. And whenever I get to the top and it's a little narrower, it's going to do what it's going to do. I don't care. When I do the sleeves, they're going to look how they look. I just don't care. I just want this sweater. I have been thinking about this sweater for so long. I've been wanting the sweater. I spun specifically for this sweater. And I think that's the problem. I have overthought this sweater. That is the biggest problem. So anyway. Obviously, as you can see, I've made a great deal of progress since the last time I talked to you because it wasn't even cast on at that point. So I would say I'm maybe 40% done with the whole sweater, 45%, somewhere around there. I mean, it's going very quickly um, and I've, I've worked on it pretty regularly and I'm enjoying it. I love working with the yarn. It's so soft. 
Um, a lot of the yarns that I used in it had some silk in it. Um, it's, it's just lovely in that respect. Um, I have, I've definitely gone off pattern in a lot, a lot of ways, including the fact that I'm using smaller needles, um, but I'm getting a size that'll work for me and that's what's important. So yeah, I, I did the, um, the thing, the, <laughs> <laughs> the ribbing at the bottom. Oh gosh, that's the other thing. I did the ribbing on fives and the, the body I changed to sixes. But when I first started, I decided, oh, well, I'm going to do my ribbing differently. I'm going to do um, a three by one rib instead of a one by one rib. Well, what I didn't count on then was that when you switched to the stockinette body, well, the right side is going to be the reverse stockinette. It, there's a huge weird difference. Um, and so I had a whole five inches, four and a half, five inches of ribbing done on that first part. And when I got into the body an inch or so, I realized how weird it was going to look. And so I ripped that completely out too. <laughs> so I've really done a lot of ripping on this to try to get what I wanted. Um, so then I started it over and I did the one by one ribbing that the pattern calls for. So I am still following the pattern a little bit. Um, the same way I was, I was thinking I might redesign the top so that I actually had in, you know, armhole decreases and I would pick up and do like a short row, um, sleeve, um, you know, inset sleeve. And then I thought, no, I'm not totally redesigning this whole pattern. This was where I was like having that conversation with myself of just let it be, let it be the pattern that you first liked and that you wanted. Don't redesign the whole thing. So I'm just going to let it be. <laughs> okay. So that is the weekender. Stay tuned for how that is going to come up. The weekender ish. I have to say it's the weekender ish pullover at this point because it's definitely not the design that Andrea Mowry originally created. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to tell you? I don't think so. I think I've told you everything about my weirdness over the sweater. Okay, one other project that I've worked on, and this is another new cast on, and this was sort of a whim kind of cast on. I saw it on Instagram, and it is a pattern by Kat Bordy, who is a designer that a lot of people know. She's been around for quite a long time. She passed away earlier this year, though, which is sad. Um, but she, um, her, her Instagram account is still being maintained. I'm not sure by who, but they've been posting different patterns of hers, and one that they posted was the Rio Kalina. Um, cowl, which is a really interesting design, and I immediately saw it, and I thought, oh, that's really cool. I love it, and I thought, oh, I bet it's really, really difficult, though. There's got to be some major chart because there's all this cabling and everything, and then it's a free pattern, so I went, and I downloaded it, and I looked, and there's no chart, and the cabling is so creative the whole way this is done. You basically just cast on the ribbing. You cast on a two-by-two two rib, and then you start knitting and you do your own cabling whenever you want to. She tells you which stitches, like stitch segments to use for your cables and how, like, you know, how to do them in, in general terms. But she said, just throw them in wherever you want. Do one here, do one there. It's a where the river takes you, wherever the river takes you or something concept. I'm unsure if she's done other patterns like that or not, but I just love that. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh, I have to do that. Um, because it just seems so very relaxing to do something that looks really intricate, but you're just sort of going with the flow and doing what you want to do. So I, I went through my stash. I knew I wanted to do it in a blue yarn. And I don't have a ton of blue yarn in my stash, the, at least not the color that I was looking for. Um, and I, I didn't want to dye something specifically for it. I wanted to use stash. And so I actually found, I had a skein and a half left over of this blue Cascade 220 Heathers. It was the mallard colorway that I did my arboreal sweater out of a couple of years ago now. So I had leftovers, I thought this would be perfect. I wanted blue because I wanted it to be a water theme. Um, for whatever reason, that particular day, that was really speaking to me, that whole just let the river take you where it's going to. 
and I felt compelled to cast this on near water. So I went down to the park and I walked, you know, down to the lake in my, sat near my tree right by the lake and I cast this on. I tried to record a video that day when I was doing that, but my phone died very quickly and so I don't really have any footage. So I can't share that part with you, but that's what I did. And it was just really relaxing and meditative and um, just, I don't know. There was something about that whole process that spoke to me. So this has actually taken up a bunch of my table knitting time because I don't have to think about it much. But isn't it interesting? I mean, just look at that. Like if you just saw that, you would think, oh wow, that must be a really crazy chart. But it's not. I mean, just, you can imagine each of those cables being like a little river. Oh, okay. You know, and it's funny because I looked at finished projects of this and a lot of them, like people interspersed cables, but not very frequently. So the, the crosses are very gentle and spaced out. Mine looks like a class five rapids, <laughs> just like everywhere, Wah! but I'm having fun with it. And that's what matters. You're supposed to only do the cable crosses on one side, but what really was interesting to me, and I realized as I got into it, because I did accidentally do some on the wrong side at one point, it doesn't matter because remember I told you I took that class about reversible cables and the whole crux of doing a reversible cable is to be doing them in ribbing. And this is doing cables in ribbing. The cables are completely reversible. I mean, it looks like a cable on either side. You don't have that weird opposite side thing going on with these cables. So yeah, it's just, it's fun. I'm having such a good time with it. Um, I, I can't remember how far I've got right now. I think you have to go like 26 inches or something because then you you cross it over and you do these two short seams and then the, the cowl folds over. It's really interesting. I will put the link in for the pattern. Um, I think it's on her blog as well as on Ravelry. Um, I know it was, I wanna say it was something she talked about in her her last blog post before she passed away. I think it was the blog post where she informed her readers that she was dying, which I thought, wow, that is interesting. And she was very open about the fact that she had been dealing with cancer and, you know, she was finally to a point where there was nothing more that could be done and she was at peace with that and she had family taking care of her and she was just seeking to enjoy her final days and I was just so moved by that and I remember thinking you know I hope when I come to that point in my life that I can be that that calm about it and and just embrace life in that way so anyway wow that went a little bit dark but not really because it was such a positive thing so anyway those are my projects I know I probably left some details out here, I'm using my cute bag again that I got from Prairie Bag Works, um, the pigskin party bag that she did for this year. All oh, the sheep, that's where that's hiding. Um, anyway, I will have links to all my projects um, in the show notes. And again, if they go to Ravelry, I'll have a little asterisk in case you don't wanna go to Ravelry, that's fine. Um, other than that, those are the only things that I've worked on, but that was sort of a lot. But I told you last time that I had a natural dyeing um, project in the works. And so I wanna show you the outcome of that. I have two actually, because I had picked a whole bunch of marigolds, just the flowers, and I did a marigold dye bath. And then I had picked up a bunch of acorns because we've got tons of them. And I had been soaking that. I soaked the ac I crushed them and then I soaked the acorns for a couple of days and then brought it to a simmer and I strained that and then put, um, I did yarn and I had purchased some silks and here's the silk from the acorn. Isn't that an awesome color? I just love it. So um, I got these from Dharma Trading Company. They're not exceptionally expensive or super good or anything but they were something I just wanted to play with and I, I will eventually try like eco dyeing eco printing on these that was the word I was trying to think of last time 
and I couldn't. <laughs> anyway, but this is just the acorn die at this point. So that's how that turned out. And then I did some on some of my ridge top. I had some half skeins that I had mordanted. I think I mentioned that. But then I also realized for acorn or anything coming from the oak tree, you don't have to pre morden your fiber um, because there's a lot of tannins in oak things. So I used unmordanted fibers, like the silk was not mordanted and the um, yarn that I did was not mordanted. So this is the color that I got with the acorns on unmordanted. Um, ridge top, which is my non superwash Romney Falkland blend yarn. So that's a really nice color. It's coming up fairly true on the camera. Um, I I actually did two skeins because at some point I'm going to put the other one in an iron bath just to modify it and see what color I get there. Um, but I want to use a very little bit of iron because I don't want to end up with black, which is what had happened with my previous experiments. They got quite, quite dark. Um, but I haven't had time to do that, and I didn't have time to do it when the yarn was wet the first time. But it's not something you have to do right away either. So anyway, that is how that turned out. And then I did the marigold bath. Okay, so the marigolds were amazing to work with. I had both gold and orange flowers, but it turned it was a very yellow bath. And this is what the yarn turned out like. Look at that color. Isn't that just beautiful now if you don't like yellow you might not think so but oh, I love this so much yeah there's specs there I'm going to talk about those in a minute so I did this is again ridge top which was mordanted with alum you had to mordant your stuff ahead of time for the marigold so I mordanted everything that I did in marigold with alum I did some of my fluff base my mohair silk because I just wanted to see how it turned out. I thought it turned out pretty cool. It's a little brighter on camera than it is in real life. Although I think the light right in here is affecting that for me, not so much for you. Um, anyway, I really like how those turned out. And then the silk, I did one silk and um, yeah, I did two skeins of this, but only one of everything else. I did one silk and then I immediately um, eco printed it. So this is the silk and I love just the base color that the silk turned out. And then I, <laughs> I try, I just, I didn't have anything big. Like I didn't have any leaves that I knew would work well. Um, I used some elderberries. I had some dried elderberries. I had, what else did I have? Um, oh, hibiscus flowers, some dried hibiscus. I had some red onion skins. I had a couple of other dried things, like dye stuffs that I had, I'd purchased a while ago. I can't remember what they are. If I, if I think about it, I'll put it in the show notes. Anyway, some of them turned out really cool. And there's actually one, this right here. Is it this one? Hang on, let me find it. I'm pretty sure, oh, it's either this one or this one. Um, one of these purpley ones. It's either that one or this one. It might be this one. I had one flower that I had picked. I had like a little pile of flowers that I had picked one time when I was doing like a yarn layout to take pictures. And then the flowers just ended up sitting and I never threw them away or anything. So I used this one random purple flower. I think it might have been a petunia. And I thought, eh, I've got it here. I might as well put it on and see what it does. And it really did like yield color sometimes even though a flower is colorful it doesn't necessarily yield color but that really did so this is very just splattery it's not um i don't know it's not as you know intricate design wise as some eco printed silks i've seen like maria from ninja chickens does amazing work that way but i still really really like it and um, I may reprint it again another time and do something with leaves um, if I can figure out what to use. But for right now, I'm just hanging on to it. I don't know what it'll ever be if I'll ever actually wear it just this way. I may use the fabric to try to make myself something to wear like a top or something. I don't know. We'll just have to say. In the meantime, the one thing I did that I screwed up with this one is in, I didn't strain the bath. 
I didn't have, the marigold flowers were still in the bath when I put everything in. And I did that on purpose thinking, oh, well, maybe the marigolds will like bump up against things and like make the color more intense. I know what marigolds do and I know that they have all those little seeds and it just never occurred to me until I had everything in the water and then saw what was happening. Do you see how much veg matter is in there? <laughs> That's not from the yarn. That's from the dye process because I am stupid. <laughs> Or at least I was there. I sat and I picked so much of this stuff out of there, but there's still a ton in there. And oh, it was really fun trying to pick it out of the mohair. Let me tell you, that was insane. But whatever. It's all an experiment, right? It's just, I'm playing with it. I'm having fun with it. I still have a bunch more marigolds. I went out and I picked pretty much the rest of what I have that could be used. So I can do one more marigold bath got lots and lots of acorns left. The other thing I have is I picked up some um, birch bark when I was down at the park the last time because you can dye with birch and it was from a tree that was fallen. You should never pull, I mean even though birch peels off of the trees, if it's still on a standing tree, do not take it off. That will damage the tree. But this was a fallen log um, so I peeled some of that off. I haven't done anything with it yet but from my resources it looks like I should get maybe like a real mauve kind of pink kind of color out of it. So that'll be interesting to see. So stay tuned for that. But that is my natural dyeing experimentation of late. Um, I think that's everything I have for 90%. So let's talk a little bit about 10%. I don't really have a lot of 10% because I already told you about my hair. That was sort of my big deal 10% thing. That's it. I'm going to go to shop news now. If you're not going to hang around for the shop news, that's fine. Thank you so much for watching thus far. But if you are, let's get into it. Um, okay, September monthly makes winner prizes. Those are finally shipped out. <laughs> I really apologize that it took as long as it did, but um, they are finally out. As of this morning, they were all shipped out. Um, so I do have the October monthly makes chatter winner to announce today. Let me show you, wait a minute, gotta reach behind me. <laughs> Let me show you your prize choices. Um, I have two prizes, and the first one is a skein of my Bonafide base, and this is the Rain Clouds and Tie Dye colorway. So that is on Bonafide, DK weight. And the other one I have is a one of a kind, and I think it was from when I was doing a custom order of this or a special order. Um, and I had some dye left over, so I just did a variegated version of it on some of my twist base, which is the non superwash worsted weight that has both the dark and the gray and the white um, merino in it. So it's kind of fun. But anyway, these are your two yarn choices, and whichever one you pick, I will include <laughs> this fun lime green pom pom. I'm into pom poms today. You know what? I've got so many pom poms, and I love the idea of them, but I don't always love them on my hats, and I thought I'd have to do something with these pom-poms. But anyway, this lime green one will go with either skein, and I think it'll be fun. <laughs> so whichever skein you pick, you will get the pom-pom. Okay, so the posts for October were posts not, the ones that were not mine, because I was actually the first person who posted in October and the last person who posted in October, so I used the ones that weren't me at the beginning and the end. So posts 912 through 983, um, I did random number generator and random number generator chose post 929, who is GIS girl and that is Kelsey. So congratulations, Kelsey. Um, let me know which skein you would like and I will send it on its way to you along with the floofy pom pom. So, ooh, ooh that kind of goes with my shirt too. <laughs> anyway. All right, so I think I'm all caught up on prizes now. All right, so let me recap my orders of business at this point. Um, I've got all of my special orders out except the most recent ones. I've had some come in like within the last week or so, so those are not dyed up. But otherwise, if you had a special order waiting, it should be to you by now. My wholesale order that I was working on, that has gone out, so that's done. So at this point, my main focus 
um, aside from another possible small wholesale order I might need to do. Um, otherwise, I'm focused on holiday colorways for the shop, well, as well as doing the special orders. But I already mentioned that. Um, so I'm planning to do three more regular updates in the shop for this year. Um, and I'm reading my notes now so I don't tell you the wrong thing. The first one and the biggest one as far as holiday colorways will be um, are, is going to be the one on Wednesday and that will be November 18th um, at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, I will have holiday colorway yarn. There will also be some winter colorways. I will have a few serendipity project sets. I've decided to rename those. I used to call them serendipity sweater sets, but I realized there's not quite enough yarn in there for every single size of sweater. And I don't want to sound like I'm being insensitive to that. So I've just changed the name to serendipity project sets. Um, but a lot of people will be able to get a sweater out of them still. Still six skeins of yarn. Um, I will have fiber. I know I never did the fiber exclusive update, but I'm just going to incorporate fiber into my next three updates just so that there's some out there finally. Okay, so let me show you some of the yarn that's going to be in the update. This is not exhaustive. There's still more downstairs that's not reskained. But what I've got so far is I have Holly and Pine, which was a new colorway last year. So that one. And then I've got Cozy Mountain Christmas, which I only ever dyed one other time a couple years ago. I had major dye issues with a couple of the colors. So I've reformulated this colorway. Um, I think I only ever sold it as kind of oopsie skeins to tell you the truth. So this is the first time it's going to be in the shop as like a normal colorway. So it's a five stripe colorway and I will have a mock-up of the striping pattern in the listing. So I like that one. Um, I like it. Why do I say that? I like all my colorways. This one is the one that I did last year. This was actually the self striping version of color play number two which I did, I, it was probably around this time last year. Um, but I'm calling, I've renamed it since I'm bringing it back, um, and I'm calling it Winter Play. The reason I'm bringing it back is, because my Color Play color was, once they're done, I usually don't bring them back. But I did not get to dye up very much of the self-striping of Color Play number two, so I wanted to offer it again. So here it is again, now being called Winter Play. And then... A new colorway that I have for this year. Yeah, you know, I know I told you I was probably going to try to do my Christmas pie colorway again. I don't think I'm going to do it. There's reasons. I'll, I'm not going to go into it, but I don't think I'm going to get that done this year. But I do have this colorway that I absolutely love how it turned out. And I'm calling this Sugar Plumbed. <laughs> now, you know, the whole... The Christmas thing, the visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. I did some research because I really, I don't know, the name sugar plum just came to me whenever I dyed this because I did not have the name as the inspiration for the colorway. I knew I wanted to put the colors together and then I came up with the name. But I, I didn't really know what a sugar plum was. I assumed it was some sort of fruit thing. Well, it's not. Did you know that? Sugar plums have absolutely nothing to do with plums or you know, sugar-coated plums, anything like that. Apparently, a sugar plum is a generalized term for um, like a nut or a seed or something like that that has been coated with many, many layers of a hard, uh, what becomes a hard sugary coating. Think like a Jordan almond or even like a peanut M&M, something like that. That is what um, uh, is referred to as a sugar plum. I had no idea. <laughs> um, you'll see things for sale that, that are like, you know, confection things in the shape of a plum that have like granular sugar all over them and they're called sugar plums, but that's actually not accurate for what they originally were. I don't know if actual sugar plums, like the real thing, that kind of candy is sold that way anymore. I don't know. I get the feeling it was more of a European thing than it was anywhere else. But anyway, I'm using the term sugar plum for the name just because I do think these are plummy colors. And even though 
it isn't really representative of what an actual sugar problem is. You could maybe think of it kind of like being catfished. <laughs> Has nothing to do with actual catfish, right? So if you're sugar plumbed, maybe that's when you're deceived into thinking something is about a sugary fruit. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, this is my new colorway for this year for Christmas um, or the holiday season. It doesn't have to just be for Christmas. Sugar plumbed. And here's what it looks like in the ball. I did not bring the other skein of it in here that I have. But anyway, I will have that in the shop. I will have inversibles. Um, I don't have them here. They're they're not reskeined downstairs. Um, but the colors that they will be, I will have this two um, these two colors of inversibles. And then I'm going to do a brighter Christmas color version this year. So it'll be these two colors um, of inversibles. But these are actually half skeins of um, Cozy, my worsted weight base. And I did. I'm doing three half skein sets of both of the red, the green, and then a speckled version with the white background. Um, I just thought these would be really fun for like quick gift knits or quick holiday gifts like for hats or mittens or cowls. I thought they would just be a lot of fun to do little color work things or not even color work, whatever you want to use them. But these are three half skeins of Cozy. So I'm gonna have them in this color combination. I'll have them in the brighter Christmas colors. This red is really getting blown out in here, um, but I'll have those colors. And then I decided to use the colors from this new colorway as well. So there will be this darker version and there will be the lighter mauve oriented version and the lighter green. I just, I love these colors. I think they're so pretty. So anyway, those are some of the things that will be in the shop. So that will be coming up um, this coming Wednesday, the 18th. I will do my best to restock any of the holiday colorways that sell out right away. Um, and I will do that as I can. I can't make promises on that, I guess. And I'm not going to put any of the holiday colorways up with die to order options because I know I cannot guarantee that I'll get them out in time for you to have them to make things for the holidays. So I'm just having in shop ready to ship items at this point for that kind of thing. Um, the next update after this one will be on Saturday, December 5th, and that will be a 10 a.m. update. Um, there will definitely be more winter colorways at that point, possibly more holiday colorways if the need is there. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then there will also be more fiber in that update. Um, and there could be other things too, I just don't know what yet. <laughs> and then the last update of 2020 will be on Wednesday, December 16th, and that will be um, a, a 5 p.m. update. And that will be my last regular update. I have not planned ahead for what will be in that update, but I will let you know that as we draw closer to that. Now, in between that time, we've got a lot of holiday things coming up and times when I often do specials and sales and things like that. So I just wanted to give you sort of a heads up about that. I can't give you details about it yet, but just know for sure that I will be offering some kind of special or discount for Small Business Saturday, which is the Saturday right after Thanksgiving here in the United States. So that would be, I don't have the date of that written down, but <laughs> I'll put it in the show notes or down here or something. That's everything I've got for you this time. I'm gonna to try to put this together into something cohesive and it's really cold out here right now so I need to make myself more tea. <laughs> and I hope you have a wonderful weekend coming up. This weekend is uh, Vogue Knitting Live November. I am doing a mosaic knitting class tomorrow with Franklin Habit. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Arna and Carlos are doing one of the keynote speeches, speaking, speaker things, <laughs> talking, um, which I think is right after my class tomorrow, in fact. So I'm looking forward to hearing them. Um, I think there was something going on today 
that I wanted to take part in. I don't remember. Oh, it was a yoga kind of thing or something. I think that was today, and I think it was part of the Vogue Knitting Live. And I totally missed it because I think I started to record then. So, oh well. Can't win them all. Um, yeah, there's other things going on, but I don't have the details with me here. So I'll talk to you about them next time if I if they're still applicable. Sorry. This is what happens when I record when I'm not planning to record. But anyway, that's it for today. Have a good weekend. I hope you're doing well. If you're here in the United States, just remember to keep breathing through all of this election stuff that's still out there. And, you know, we'll get through it eventually. Oh, what a, oh, anyway, we won't go there. Let's end on a happy note. I'm thankful for you guys. I just, I couldn't do 350 episodes if there wasn't um, viewers like you to do them for. Um, yeah, so thank you for being here with me. And if you stuck around through this whole thing, especially thank you. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.